through the years. You rotate defensive linemen all game long. You would generally rather play the same five. No. No? No, I, I you know, I, I, I've gravitated over the years. I think the older I've gotten, I've really felt like if there's a player that can help us win, I'm going to find a way to give him a role. Now, what is that role? Could it be an emergency tight end, or is it the goal line tight end, or is it the short yardage tight end, or you know what? Maybe he can help us win because he's on the field goal team. Uh, if he's really good, and I think he deserves a start, he will be in a rotation of being able to play. I uh, found that over the last three years, having a number of players at Marshall, I felt like I had nine players that could play at Marshall. Yeah. I played nine players in almost every game I coached there in the offensive line in some form or fashion, and uh, some more than others. But if they if they deserve to play and they can help us win football games, let's find them a spot to help us win football games. What value did you find in using more bodies throughout, well, throughout the Well, I, I just think, I think at the end of the day, the older you get, you know, more licks you get on your shoulders and hands and all the different things. I think it just takes a few hits off of them that you might be able to use them a little bit longer, maybe more productive towards the end of the season. Or it might help you just give a kid a deep breath, let him take a reset button over on the sidelines for a series. You know, I, I, find, I found that probably to be the most productive thing, um, you know, particularly if the kids are struggling early in the game. How many guys do you, how many guys do you have here right now that you think could play in a game and how many do you think you might have in a month? I got zero right now. No, but no, I, I, <laughs> that's I, I got, uh, you know, I, I think I got five or six guys right now and I, you know, I think there's a potential for a couple more, maybe three, um, just depending on, you know, what kind of next couple weeks they do have. Uh, uh, certainly in counting those five or six guys, there's certainly things that all those guys have got to get better at. Right. And uh, we have to become better pass pro guys across the board. And um, certainly got to be more efficient in the run blocking things that we're going to be asking them to do. But, um, you know, again, if I got eight or nine guys that can play, I'll be excited. Are you a zone blocking guy or a man blocking guy or a little both? I'm going to do whatever it takes for us to win. Yeah. And if that if that's uh, gap schemes, that's draws, that's down and arounds, that's zone, that's outside zone, inside zone, whatever we're going to end up doing the best, uh, that's where we'll go to. What does this offense remind you of so far? Of the I, think it's, I, think it, uh, I think it's been said, actually. I think it's three or four offenses, and it's still not a finished product. Uh, I, think, I think we're still going to continue to learn what our players can do. Because there's some, going to be some guys that we didn't have in the spring that's going to be out there. Uh, I think all of them know us better. I think there's going to be some more comfort level of things that we're going to ask them to do. Uh, but uh, I think you'll see a number of different things. But hopefully playing fast and physical are at the top of the categories. How much do you put on your center? A lot. I, I, just, I just came out of a meeting talking about that very, very one thing that you just asked. I, I think everyone has to have a mindset that they're a center, even though they may never play there, you know, because that person has to know the most. And if, if Dylan Wanham, who's only played right and left tackle, I think in his career here, can continue to think that he might play center, the better football player he's going to be a tackle because he's going to understand and be able to visually see the whole concept of what we're trying to get accomplished even more so. How does how, how from the outset has Eric handled what you asked the center to do? I think all all three of the guys that really took snaps in the spring, I think all three of those grasped Eric, it. Hank, and uh, Vinny. Vinny. I think all three of those guys um, grasped it pretty well, to be honest with you, you know, for what we asked them in the spring. Um, certainly, we've already made some adjustments throughout the summer of some things that we're doing. But, uh, you know, uh, I think the more we can do up front and take off the pressure of the quarterback, I think this is the better off we'll be. I've always felt that way. The quarterback's got a lot of things he's got to do. If we can take some of that stuff off his plate, then that's what we need to do. What do, you, what do your centers do pre snap? Everything. They're, all the, they're, they, they, they're, all the protection. Everything. Identify the, the mic. The mic, the will. Sam, whatever it might be that, you know, they point out every different little thing that we might need to get accomplished. Explain to me in terms that I understand, I think I have a vague concept of why you identify the mic every snap. Well, it's not the mic every snap. It's it's, okay. it's based upon the concept of the play. Okay. If it's a mic-driven play, then you'd want to identify the mic. If it's a will-driven play, you'd want to identify the will. That doesn't mean we're running that way. It doesn't mean we're 
But that sets your gaps? That, that, sets, common... that sets the blocking pattern, so to speak, okay. of the combination one, of two, three. Eight, eight potential blockers probably, maybe even nine in some plays oh. that you might have. But you have to have a starting point to start number. That's correct. Okay. That's correct. Thank you.